we want to find the linear approximation to f of x comma y at the point two comma four comma ten, then use a linear approximation to approximate a new function value. Notice how this function value is near the given point. So the linear approximation to a function of two variables is L of x comma y given here, where it's going to be approximately equal to f of x comma y as long as x comma y is near the point where we find the linear approximation, which is the point a comma b. So let's take a look at this graphically. Just like in two dimensions, we can use a tangent line to approximate a function value. In three dimensions, we can use a tangent plane. So here we have the surface graphed in purple, the given point is this red point, and the yellow plane is the tangent plane. So when making a linear approximation for a function of two variables, we're actually using this tangent plane to approximate the new function value. So going back to our notes, in our case, our linear approximation, L of x comma y, at the point two comma four, would be equal to f of a comma b. In our case, notice a comma b would be two comma four, and x comma y would be the new coordinates, two point one seven and four point two nine. So f of a comma b would be f of two comma four plus the partial with respect to x evaluated at two comma four times x minus a, that'd be times the quantity x minus two plus the partial with respect to y evaluated at two comma four times the quantity y minus b or y minus four. Now if we look at this equation more carefully, notice how this is just the function value at the point of tangency and then plus the sum of these products is just differential z. So all of this is differential z, the change of z along the tangent plane, which we're using to approximate the true delta z, the change of z using the true function. Because remember, differential z is defined here, and if we compare this to our linear approximation, notice how differential x is just x minus a, and differential y is just y minus b. So our next step will be to find our partial derivatives and then evaluate them at the point two comma four. But let's first rewrite the given function. We have f of x comma y equals, notice how we have a square root two in the denominator. Let's write this as five divided by two to the one half and then we'd have times x y to the one half. In this form, it'll be easier to find our partial derivatives. So the partial with respect to x will treat y as a constant and differentiate with respect to x. So notice how we would multiply by one half. So let's write that as five over two times two to the one half. And then we subtract one from the exponent, so x y to the negative one half times the derivative of x y with respect to x, that would be y. So simplifying, let's write five y in the numerator and then for the denominator, we have this two. We'd move this down to the denominator to make x, y to the one half. We already have a two to the one half there, which would be equivalent to the square root of two x, y. Now we want to evaluate this at the point two comma four. So we'd have five times four divided by two and then we have the square root of two times two times four, that's the square root of sixteen. So this simplifies to what, twenty over eight, twenty-eighths. Common factor of four, this simplifies to five halves. And now we want to find the partial with respect to y, treating x as a constant and differentiating with respect to y. So again, we multiply by one half, so we have five over two times two to the one half, subtract one from the exponent, x y to the negative one half, times the derivative of x y with respect to y, which would now be x. So now we have five x divided by two times the square root of two x y. Again, evaluating at the point two comma four. Now we'd have five times two, 
divided by two times the square root of sixteen. So now we have ten eighths, which simplifies to five fourths. So now we have all the information we need in order to find the equation of our linear approximation. We have this value and this value. So now we'll perform those substitutions and simplify to find our linear approximation at the given point. We would have L of x comma y, again at two comma four, would be f of two comma four. Well the function value here would be the z coordinate of ten plus the partial with respect to x at two comma four, that's five halves, times the quantity x minus two, and then plus five fourths times the quantity y minus four. We will go ahead and simplify this, but notice how for the second part, to find a linear approximation, we would just simply substitute the new x and y values into L of x comma y. To simplify, we'll distribute, so we have ten plus five halves x minus five plus five fourths y minus five. Notice how we have ten minus five minus five, that would be zero. So our linear approximation of f of x comma y at the given point is L of x comma y equals five halves x plus five fourths y. And now to use this linear approximation to approximate our new function value, we just need to find L of 2.17 comma 4.29. So we'd have five halves times two point one seven plus five fourths times four point two nine. Let's go to the calculator. We have five halves times two point one seven plus five fourths times four point two nine. which gives us 10.7875 for our approximation. So again, the idea here was that f of 2.17 comma 4.29 is approximately equal to L of 2.17 comma 4.29, which is 10.7875. So we found the linear approximation to our function f of x comma y at the given point here. And then we use this to approximate a new function value, which you found to be 10.7875. I hope you found this helpful.